They say that procrastination is like a credit card. It's all fun and games to spend the time that you don't have. But eventually you have to pay the bill. And the more time you spend putting things off, the bigger the payment. Most of the time, my days as a workshop manager are filled with administrative duties. Paying bills, ordering parts, dealing with customers, answering emails and phone calls. Basically doing what I can so that all my mechanic has to worry about is finishing the jobs. But today my mechanic called in sick, and there was work booked in. I could have told the customer there might be a delay, and he would have been fine with that. Or I could use this as an opportunity to forget the back end of running a business, go back to my roots and do something I actually enjoy. Because when I started working on bikes, I did it because I wanted to. 25 years later though, somewhere along the way I lost sight of the fact that this is what I love. And all the commercial crap that I need to do, I only do so that I can keep working on bikes. But the back end stuff becomes so time consuming that it requires most of my attention and I spend so much time doing it that it becomes the norm. But today was a selfish endeavour. I made a conscious decision to ignore the chores of my work and enjoy the actual process that I grew up with. The customer came in and gave me his keys and told me some issues he was having with the bike and started to head out. I almost stopped him to let him know that my mechanic was ill so there might be a delay. But as I went to do so I caught a look at his bike and I just thought to myself, that's a good looking bike, I think I'd like to work on it. So he left and I got to it, and as soon as I started draining the oil, all the voices in my head started again. I've got to call this supplier, I've got to call, email this customer, I've got to pay this bill. But then I thought how many people actually get to enjoy their work and use it to procrastinate with other stuff. The emails can wait, customers can wait. Suppliers can wait. The sky won't fall if I service this bike right now. Sure, it's possible that my duties will pile up if I leave them too long. But all that makes me want to do is enjoy the job in front of me right now. So if I make a decision to procrastinate, I'm going to do it with purpose. And the tool that I'm using to procrastinate, I'm going to exploit every little facet of it. Today I'm not a workshop manager or a business owner. Today I'm a bike mechanic, just like I was 20 years ago before marriage, before kids, before business. The divorce took a lot out of me, I can't do anything about that right now, but I can change this guy's oil filter. My disabled daughter had another seizure last week, I can't do anything about that right now, but I can fix this guy's brakes. The accountant says there's another tax payment coming up, and me sitting at my desk will not earn me any money, right now but I can make sure this guy doesn't pull a muscle every time he uses a clutch. I got an annoying parking fine the other day and I can't do anything about that now, but I can finish this service on this magnificent leader class street fighter so I can go home and cook my beautiful girlfriend a delicious duck breast with a relaxing glass of red. And the routine starts to soothe me again, like the old days. Putting on gloves, grabbing the right tools, using the proper procedure, even tightening a bolt the right way can be so rewarding. People who don't know, just don't know. I used to work in the back of my dad's clothing factory. He made me load piles and piles of clothing orders into a delivery van. And I was a jaded teenager who wanted to be anywhere else. And whenever he'd see me pouting and dragging my feet, he'd say, If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And I always replied, But what if the job's not worth doing? But there's a sweet satisfaction to gain from the most menial tasks if you know that you've done everything you can to do it properly. The bolt won't snap under your control. And it won't have a chance to undo itself if you apply the right amount of torque. So I put the tool down with confidence that I can move on to the next thing. And the next thing becomes the next thing. And things come together. Lunchtime rolls around and the gloves come off. I wash my hands in the same place I've washed them thousands of times before. The next step would usually be to check my emails, and we all know nothing good can come from that. But as I sit down to my desk, the computer's screensaver is showing me photos of my two little daughters and my beautiful girlfriend and they all look so happy. And this makes me happy. So my emails can wait. Today's supposed to be a good day. 
think I'll let my screensaver run. I eat my lunch while my desktop flips through happy occasions. Riley's first birthday, granddad's hundredth birthday, first anniversary dinner with my girlfriend. That was a good day too. And I can't stand social media, so when I finish my sandwich, I give myself another 10 minutes to play a game on my phone. This is when my dad's voice pops in again. Get off your ass and earn some money. But I can't. Even though I'm really enjoying servicing this bike, we all need that disconnect. That small escape from reality, just so that we're able to return to reality without burning out. Or in my case, making a mistake. You cannot be a mechanic when you're stressed. That bolt that I was talking about earlier, the one that was so satisfying to get the right tension, if I can't remember appreciating how tight that nut was, then I can't remember how tight that nut was. And in my business, if I can't remember how tight a nut was, it's because it's loose. And if one nut is loose, bad things happen. But today is a good day, so I give myself 10 minutes for me time. Fresh cup of coffee, an activity that is not part of the job that I've been focusing on for the last few hours. And when I'm ready to get up, I see that beautiful bike waiting for me to finish it off, and I feel lucky again. Not all jobs are like this. Everyone hits brick walls. I get bikes that just aren't doing what they're supposed to, and they won't tell me why. It's like the difference between doctors and veterinarians. Doctors have it easy. Their patients can tell them where it hurts. Animals don't speak English, so vets have to approach things differently. With machines, the only place to start is to be familiar with the systems and their components. You have to know how things work in order to diagnose why they're not working properly. In essence, a good mechanic can already see how a machine is supposed to work, and he figures out ways to make it better. But another reason I chose to do this work today is because it's what we call a no-brainer. There's no diagnostic work involved. The bike is running fine and just needs to be freshened up. No investigative work necessary. I usually have to step up to the plate when my mechanics hit a brick wall. I come in and show them where to look next. But this job is a breeze. It's me going back to the basics, which is enjoyable because I get a chance to be sentimental. When I'm training apprentices, all they want to do is engine rebuilds and custom mods and exciting stuff. They get disgruntled when they're just another standard service to do. That always puzzled me. It's frustrating when others can't see what I can see. Look at this gorgeous machine you get to work on. Look how lucky you are that someone has entrusted you with their pride and joy, this glorious machine with thousands of moving parts that all come together to convert chemical energy into mechanical energy through the use of miniature explosions, no less. I guess it's a big picture that needs to win out, as opposed to, it's just another drive chain I need to adjust. It's just another tire to inflate. When I was an apprentice, I never left work before 10 p.m. because there was always more to learn. The disappointment that I get from apprentices when I ask them to wash a bike that's just been finished. Because when anything becomes a big part of your job, the repetition overcomes the reward. But for me, this is the best bit. These beautiful machines that we get to work on. These mechanical marvels that have the potential to deliver such joy and freedom. And when we get them, they're dirty. But when we're finished with them, they work properly and they shine. It's super satisfying. I love washing bikes, but it's only because it's the last thing that I need to do. If my whole job was washing other people's bikes all day, eventually I would resent them and my bike would be sleeping under a cover of dust.
The road test brings it all together. Make no mistake, this is the most important part of the service because I don't have to rely on communicating with the customer. I get to feel what the bike is doing. And as a mechanic, I notice things that owners don't. This is work. While I'm trying to obey traffic laws and avoid soccer mums in minivans, I'm trying to listen, trying to feel the bike, constantly comparing how it feels against how it should feel. But there is a small moment between traffic lights where I think again, this is a brilliant bike. This machine's doing everything I'm asking from it. And it's making me enjoy the journey. It's making me think back to the days when I had different responsibility, different friends who can enjoy this journey with me. But those days are gone and I need to focus now just a little bit more. Have I done everything right? Man, this thing rides smooth. Did I tighten that nut? Man, this bike's got balls. Did I check that thing? Man, this is a brilliant bike. And then the rain starts, and I guess I'm thankful that it had the courtesy to wait until after the road test when I had to wash the bike. When I grab the hose, I'm not dragging my feet anymore. Today was a separation from the daily grind, a restoration of lost love, and a reminder of a simple but important memory. I fix bikes, and I do it because I love it. It ain't gonna make me rich, but that doesn't make me love it any less. I feel honored and privileged to work on other people's machines and get paid for it. And there's a selfish pride in enjoying the fact that I'm good at it. So I hope my stupid voice wasn't too annoying to listen to, because I'd hate to be accused of ranting. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. Because they say that procrastination is the enemy of success, and I burnt a day of paperwork to do this, so I really need something good to come from it. Anyway, this morning my mechanic called in sick and it's raining now. I really took my time procrastinating, so I've got other work to catch up on. But those bills really can wait for tomorrow, because today, today was a good day. <laughs>